when working with playbooks, it's important to be able to verify the playbook syntax. Uh, before you start writing playbooks, it's a good idea to optimize your editor for YAML files. Uh, if you are using Vim or VI, uh, you can edit the Vim RC file and include the line that's on the slide. If you do that, uh, pressing the tab key will automatically give you two spaces, and that avoids confusion and mistakes. Uh, once you've created the playbook, you want to verify the syntax. Uh, you can use Ansible playbook dash dash syntax check on uh, playbook, and that will do the syntax check for you. Uh, also useful is to output the playbook verbosity. You can use minus V up to four times uh, to increase the verbosity. So minus V will only show task results. Minus VV will show task results and task configuration. Triple V will show information uh, about the connections to managed hosts. And four Vs will add information about plugins and users that are used and names of scripts that are executed. And that is very useful if things go wrong. Uh, also very useful is the option minus uppercase C, which you can use to perform a dry run on the playbook. And that's just a quick verification to see what it is going to do without changing anything. Let's go have a look. All right, I have created a playbook that contains an error. So let's do a syntax check on vsftpd error.yaml. And oh no, syntax error while loading YAML did not find expected key. And the error appears to be in line 6, column 4, but maybe somewhere else. And the offending line appears to be dash name. And then we get this yum. And I hope you, you can already see what's wrong here. So if we open this vsftpd-error.yaml, uh, you can see that there's an indentation problem. So let's fix the indentation problem and let's run the syntax check again. And now you can see it's just returning the name of the playbook, which means it did not find any error. Uh, now let's use Ansible playbook minus uppercase C on vsftpd.yaml. That is doing the dry run. And we can see the result of the dry run. Dry runs can be useful, but uh, you should be aware that if task number two depends on task number one, uh, it's not always realistic. Because if you need to install something, uh, and next you are going to start uh, the same thing, well, if it isn't installed, you cannot start it. And that is where dry runs uh, will fill. So dry runs uh, are of limited use. Now, if you want to have more details about what is happening, then you can use the minus V options. Let's go all the way and let's do it four times. As you can see, it is really giving a lot of details. And it's dumping everything on the standard out. And if anything is going wrong, then just scroll up and uh, look for the red text, basically. Because Ansible is pretty consistent. If it goes wrong, it will show the error messages in red. For most people, four Vs are way too much. Uh, start by using two Vs, for example. And that's already giving quite uh, some detail. Now let's take care of Vim, so that Vim is going to make it easy uh, to work with uh, Ansible playbooks. So I am creating in my home directory the vimrc file. And in this file, I'm using auto cmd file type yaml set local ai. TS is 2, SW is 2, and ET. And now let's verify if I create a test.yaml. Well, the good thing is that Vim is not complaining, which means that there is no syntax errors. And let me use the three dashes, name uh, my test. I press the tab key and I use hosts uh, all. And you can see that the indentation is automatically taken care of. Uh, so next I can use tasks followed by name uh, task one and whatever. You can see that uh, the tab key is giving me two spaces and that's all that we care about here. 
So that is how uh, the setting in the Vim RC can help you uh, in making uh, writing playbooks a little bit easier.